What's up? What's up, my lifers? How are we? Welcome to another episode of Everyday Living. I am your host, Angie, and today we have a power pack show for you guys. Look, we have some things that I want to talk about and I want to share with you today. Five signs that you're in an abusive church. Yes, an abusive church. If that sounds like something that you are interested in hearing, then I need you to thumbs up this live stream, share me out, and come right back after these messages. Angie in real life, live, live. Angie in real life with one L. Live, live. I am your hope dealer and your purpose push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out. Here's what you gotta do. Get the book of fashion coming to. What's up, what's up, what's up, my lifers? How are we? Welcome back to No Day's Journey in the World with your girl, me, Angie, and Real Life. Look, guys, welcome to Angie and Real Life. You guys will come here and you will get encouraged, you will get influenced, and you will get motivated. I am known as your hope dealer and your purpose pusher, pusher. So guess what? All things on Angie and Real Life are created with you in mind. So if you subscribe to this channel, you will not regret it. So he's what? What you gotta do? Hit the bell, subscribe, share, and comment too. It's Angie in real life. It's Angie in real life. It's Angie in real life. It's one L in real life. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all my subscribers. I love you so, 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 so much. AKA, you guys are known as lifers. So join the movement and see you in the next video. Deuces. Hey guys, here's what you gotta do. Hit the bell, subscribe, share, and comment too. It's Angie in real life. It's Angie in real life. It's one L in real life. Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. El, El Marie, Letitia Wright. Welcome, Auntie. How are you? My auntie and now my first lady. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. Guys, I'm so excited about today's live stream. Why? Because I can identify with the topic. I can identify with what this topic is all about. Those of you that are on Facebook, you have to give StreamYards permission to um, view your comments because you can comment, but um, if you don't give StreamYards permission, then I won't be able to see your comment. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please do so. Angie in real life, come on over, join the movement, guys. Um, I'm so excited today, as I am every day. I don't know, there's something that just shifts in my heart and my spirit and my soul when I hit play, man. When I hit go live, it just shifts my whole world and my whole mentality. So First of all, I want to say welcome to everyone. I want to say congratulations to all of those that have accomplished any YouTube milestones, any um, uh, goals that were set outside of YouTube. Congratulations. Any birthdays, anniversaries, um, any upcoming birthdays. If you guys have birthdays coming up, email me at angieandreallife at gmail.com so I can give you a personal shout out on your birthday um, or at least in the month. So shout out to everyone that have birthdays in the month of August. Guys, um, we are going to go into prayer. You guys know I got to give y'all the national days, the national days. If you guys are watching the replay, please hit replay in the comment section. I would appreciate it. Thumbs me up, share me out again. Um, today's the national day. Today is August the 17th, 2021. Y'all, can you believe that Christmas is in four months? <laughs> Christmas is in four months, y'all. Four months, it will be Christmas. We'll be bringing out the ham and mac and cheese and collard greens and all that fun stuff. So, 
I'm excited about today's topic because it says five signs that you're an abusive church. And today's na- one of today's national days is a national nonprofit day. National nonprofit day. Shout out to all the churches. Most churches are nonprofit organizations. Shout out to all of those that are doing things that's not considered a church, but is a nonprofit organization. So we have, I think, five national days. It's not National Nonprofit Day. National I Love My Feet Day. Y'all, this is not a day that I will be celebrating (laughs) because I do not love my feet, y'all. My feet are so ugly. But you know what I say? Feet weren't meant to be pretty because if so, God wouldn't intended us to intended them for us to walk on. Why would he have us walk on something so pretty? You know what I'm saying? So that's my, that's my opinion and I'm sticking with it. Y'all, I'm going to share a little story with y'all. National, um, I love my feet day. I want to share a story. When I first met my husband, right? I've always been insecure about my feet. And when I met my husband, um, (laughs) um, early on in my teenage years and he used to come and visit me and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he had a booming system in his car so I could hear him coming before I actually could see him, you know? So I would take off running in the house and, you know, finally, and this would happen every single time because I don't like to wear shoes. I love shoes. Don't get me wrong. I love shoes and love shoes, but I prefer to be barefoot. I really do. And that's probably why God made my feet so big and ugly because he knew that I was going to be walking on them all the time. <laughs> but I'm grateful for my feet. So um, (laughs) I would always run in the house when he came up. So finally, after a short period of time, he finally had enough nerve and says, why do you always run in the house when I come up here? Why are you always running the house when I come up here? And (laughs) I finally had enough courage to tell him that I never wanted him to see my feet. (laughs) But now he rubbed them Clydells. He rubbed them Clydells. But anyway, that's my foot story. Um, But today's national day, it says national I love my feet day is observed annually on August the 17th. This is a day to appreciate how valuable our feet are to practice good foot care and pamper our feet, our feet, our feet, our primary mode of transportation. They quietly and faithfully help us stand, swim, run, walk, play sports, jog, skip, and dance. They take us to school and to work. Our feet withstand all the things we do in our everyday lives and accomplish things our hands cannot. Taking care of our feet is important for preventing long-term problems. Years of wear and tear can be hard on them as can disease, bad circulation, and properly trimmed toenails. Y'all look, toenails is a whole nother topic. Shout out to Chef (laughs) BC Cherry Bliss that ragged on my toenails. I love you, mama. Love you, mama B. Ain't nobody like you. You the only one that could get away with talking about my toenails. (laughs) Practicing good foot care is easy. Elevating your feet is Talking about feet, if somebody want to host your girl pedicure, I'll gladly take it because we are overdue. Cash app, Angie in real life. <laughs> anyway, practicing good foot care is easy. Elevating your feet when you sit is a relaxing way to help reduce swelling, stretching, walking, or having a gentle foot massage aids in circulation. And my husband does a great foot rub, y'all. A warm foot bath is also helpful. Make sure your feet are dry before putting on shoes. Wearing shoes outside provides you with better foot protection. Listen at this. 75% of adult population has a foot problem. And and improper shoes choices account for the majority of those problems. Wearing properly fitted shoes with good art support, getting foot massages, and regular pedicures can reduce foot problems. Do y'all hear that? Regular pedicures, okay? Regular pedicures. Lord, I thank you for my pedicure today, okay? If you have persistent foot pain, consult a podiatrist. So you guys don't know a podiatrist is a foot doctor. Um, Consulting a podiatrist can help. For more information, 
foot care tips and information on I Love My Feet Day. Click on these links. Guys, how to observe I Love My Feet Day. Do whatever you do. Take a picture and hashtag I Love My Feet Day. For more information on National Days, guys, go to www.national. Um, calendarday.com and it will give you a trillion of all different kind of national days that you guys can celebrate. So y'all take care of them feet. You get a bad will, baby, you in trouble. You hear me? <laughs> the same way you take care of them tires on that vehicle, consider your feet tires. <laughs> Back in the day, the old folk used to say, I tell you what, when you say, mom, can you take me here? A mom, can can you go here? Want to run mom crazy. And she said, honey, you better get in your Chevrolet. And you be like, what's a Chevrolet? And she was like, shove one foot and lay the other. <laughs> Look, in the Bible days, Jesus walked everywhere. <laughs> Look, the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those. Come on. So y'all pastors, check out their feet. If y'all really want to know if y'all pastors call, look at them feet. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if you want to know, my God, if your pastor is anointed, if you want to know if you're anointed, look at them feet and see how they look. See if they look like they've been walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Come on, God. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a sip on that one. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Come on, don't be mad at me. The word said it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. So anyway, guys, thank you again for being here. I'm going to go into prayer and then we're going to go right on into um, today's topic. Um, If anyone have any questions, concerns, place them on the screen. I do want to address comments the second half. So feel free to jump in, join in if you have a comment. Um, I'll even drop the link if someone wants to come up and say hi or and say um, something about today's topic. I will drop the link if you want to come up. Okay, guys. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for giving us a model prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts and we forget our debtors and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from all evils. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And we thank you, O oh God, for another day. We thank you, O oh God, for every one of the subscribers. We thank you for the listeners on Facebook. God, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, O oh God, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. As we go into today's topic, God, I pray that those that need to be here and those that need to hear it, even in the replay, God, that you would enlighten them. If, if there's any leaders, any teachers, ministers, anyone out there that have caused any harm to your children, oh God, I pray, God, that you would allow them to get it right, that they will understand the way of their error, oh God. The church is a place where we're supposed to come, God, and be restored, it's like a hospital, God. We come with our illnesses, God. But if the body of Christ is sick, God, how can we help others? If the body of Christ is sick, how can we help others? And I say sick according to sin, not in physical ailments, but in the spiritual realm, oh God. If we can't hear and see what you have to say, oh God, how can we be leaders and teachers of those, oh God, that you send to us? Your sheep, oh God, we thank you right now for healing that is taking place right now in the body of Christ, in the YouTube streets. Church is a place that we are supposed to come to, God. The Bible says, forsake not the gathering and assemblance of themselves with the saints, oh God. We come to serve the devil. Notice that we are taking back our churches. We are taking back our anointing, our calling, our proper positions in you, God. And we give you glory and honor as we go over today's five signs. You are in an abusive church. The devil is a liar. Five signs, five signs that you are in an abusive church. Guys, if you want to do this study, of course, you guys know I'm a researcher. And I have this um, particular study I found on crosswalk.com. It's by Reverend Kyle Norman. It says the Christian church is to be loving and grace filled, a place people can go for encouragement and support in their spiritual lives. Unfortunately, instead of love, many have experienced harm. Instead of grace ab abuse, the prevalence of the hashtag church to movement testifies to this sad reality. Abusive churches 
acting in the name of Jesus do not reflect the church of which Christ is the head. Ephesians 1 and 2. Ephesians 1 and 2. Ephesians 1 and 2. Let's see what Ephesians 1 and 2 said. It says that Christ is the head of the church, but you know, we got to give the word as God give it, okay? Okay, okay. And don't take what people say for it. Get in the word and study for yourself. The Bible reminds us to study to show ourselves of proof. Ephesians 1 and 22, which basically says what it just read. Um, God placed all, Ephesians 1 and 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. Okay. These communities are insular, toxic, spiritually destructive. They are antithesis of the community, Christian community. Abusive churches cannot be explained by a way, explained away by rhetoric. The church isn't perfect. I love this. I love, love what he's saying here. He's saying the church isn't perfect. And that's what I want everyone to recognize before we get into this series. The church is not perfect. The church is not perfect. Just forgiven. Okay. The church isn't perfect. Just forgiven. Reminding that we are the church. And we are not perfect, but we are forgiving. As pastor was preaching on Sunday, that we are holy because our father is holy. And we have to make a decision and realize that we are not perfect. We are just forgiven. It says no community is perfect. No community ever arrives at a point where it is no longer needs healing and grace. A church community that is naturally imperfect, however, is not the same thing as a church that actively harms one's emotional, spiritual, and psychological health. Abusive churches are not simply imperfect. They are destructive. Upon their parishioners, they inflict feelings of oppression and judgment. Woe unto them. Jeremiah 23. It says, woe unto the pastors. We talked about the same topic last week when I shared a story from a young lady that I know that is um, live here locally about what happened to her at church. It's called, a, um, I, I was a live stream last week that I did. And she went back and talked to the bishop and he refused to apologize to her. Abusive. They are antithesis of the Christian community. A church community that is naturally imperfect, however, is not the same thing. Because again, the church is not perfect, it's forgiven. Okay? But if you are in a place where you are mentally being abused, physically being abused, financially being abused, it is a cult and it is not of God because God does not come to hurt you. And there's no explanation. The Bible reminds us in Luke, I think, 12 and 9, it is better to tie a millstone around your neck and jump into the lake than to harm one of the little ones. Who are the little ones? Y'all, the church is in need today of a healing because we have to prepare ourselves for what is coming. There is coming a overflow. There is coming a fluctuation. Oh my God, I hear you. In the body of Christ, people are running out of hope. People are forgetting. People do not know how to hope against hope. The word tells us to hope against hope. That is faith. And where are you coming to? You're coming to the church. The world is looking for uh, leaders that are able to, to withstand the wiles of the enemy. They're looking for someone that can help them cultivate their gifts. They're looking for someone to teach them how to um, um, journey and navigate through life successfully. 
as a believer. Yes. Do you need to, do you need to, well, I guess I don't know if I should say need to, but yeah. Do you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior? Yes, you do. If you plan on going to heaven, you have to give your life to Christ wholeheartedly and repent, turn from the world and all of its wicked ways and give your heart to Christ. That is what you have to do in order to make sure that you make it into heaven. You can be successful in life, whether you're saved or not saved, because the Bible says that gifts operate without repentance. So you can be successful on your job. You can be successful in your career. Whatever you do, you will be successful to it because the rules apply. The principle applies either in Christ or not. If you sow, you reap what you sow. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. That's the, that's the laws of humanity. When the Bible speaks of man and mankind, he means those in Christ and those out of Christ. It doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. What matters is God's word is going to come to pass, whether you agree with it or not. We have the power of choice. And when the world, the community is looking for somewhere, looking for help, we need to be ready. We need to be ready, regardless of our financial situation, regardless of our health, what it looks like. I believe there's coming a time that we're going to have to go on a strict fast for a lot of things for the church. For the church, mega churches, small churches, mini churches, anything that is cry, any any person or thing that is crying out, Lord, Lord, our father, he's, he's, he's your Lord and savior. Get ready. They are coming. The people of God are coming because of this very thing. People have been abused. And Jeremiah reminds us that he, God is going to go back and get all those people that were abused and was hurt. And he's going to raise up leaders that can uh, teach and shape these hurt sheep. And get them back to order. So if you're in a place and you're not growing, if you're in a place and you feel like you're being abused, here are some of the signs that um, could be showing that that would show that you're in an abusive place. Um, hey, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I was just going on, didn't really look at the comments. But hey, V. Michelle, Grand Rising Queen Angie, welcome. Elle Marie, yes. Spiritual, um, yes, um, uh, uh, Vern V, yes, running, wow, running out of hope. People are running out of hope and there's spiritual abuse and it's a shame. If people suffer at the hand of ab abuse, abuse outside of the realm, why do you think people give their lives to Christ to come into the body of Christ to be beat up to? No, they're there is some correction that needs to be. There is some shaping, some molding and training. But I have a mantra. I have a mantra. You have to catch the fish before you can clean it. What, what is your lifestyle showing to others that will make them say, hey, I want what you have. How can I be successful in this? How can I cross my eyes? I mean, how can I dot my eyes and cross my teeth? What do I have to do? So if you feel that you are in a place where you're being abused spiritually, financially, emotionally, or if you're wondering, I often say, I don't think I was abused. I think I was being shaped and molded for a time as this, but there are places that people are being abused. Uh, and I know firsthand y'all and God is not dropping these things in my heart and my spirit for nothing. This is worldwide. Everyone needs to hear this. That is claiming Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We have to shape up because the blood is on our hands. Five signs that you're in an abusive church. Number one, we already discussed that abuse of any kind is wrong. It says, this may seem like a no-brainer, but Sally abuse is often explained away. Abusive behavior is termed a misunderstanding or worse yet, part of godly discipline. No, everything is not a part of godly discipline. 
There is a way to do things. It says there is no truth in this. Abuse of any kind is antithetical to the gospel of Christ. Spotting abuse can be difficult as there are several different types of abuse. We are eerily aware of horrific reports of physical, sexual, physical or sexual abuse within the church. Violence of any kind is unwarranted in the community of faith. Sexual abuse ranges from rape and pedophilia to extramarital affairs between church leaders and parishioners. Y'all, this thing is happening now in the body of Christ. Emotional or psychological abuse is when the community deliberately strips away a person's self-confidence, identity, or independence. Receiving God's love becomes wrapped up in the need to obey the rules and demands of the community. Disobedience or failure to act in a perfect righteous coincides with the threat of judgment. Such judgment can only be alleviated by placing the demands on church leaders. Another form of psychological abuse is when a leader becomes too emotionally invested in church goers. This right here is where I want to land at. If I don't get this done in an hour, guys, we're going to pick this up again on Thursday at 8 a.m. So clear your calendars if you have time. If you're in the car, turn me on, sit me down, ride out. This right here is where I want to land that for a minute. Emotional form, another form of emotional or psychological abuse is when a leader becomes too emotionally invested in a church goer, using a person to prop up his or her own emotional well-being. The leader may overshare deeply personal or intimate details of their lives, or perhaps they request the individual to disclose, disclose secrets, an individual to disclose secrets. Where I'm at, I lost my place. Or perhaps they request the individual to disclose secrets themselves. Such sharing may be sexual in nature, but will undoubtedly result in the creation of a codependent relationship between the leader and the church goer. Let me see. I want to see y'all. The leader and the church goer. Angie, I want to stop and say hi. Headed to a doctor's appointment. I'll listen later. Okay. Thank you, um, Faye. Child not invested into the members. Yes. Because a lot of people, and I love... I. There is a fine line. Now, let me make it plain for you guys. I don't want you guys to think that you shouldn't be close to your leaders. I don't want you, the leaders to think that they shouldn't be close to their churchgoers because you should. You should have a relationship. And when I say, I mean, parishioner, churchgoer, leader, okay? You should have a relationship, but there are boundaries. I'm not saying that the pastor is great and high and mighty. I'm not saying the leaders are great and high and mighty, but what I'm saying is there should be boundaries. Tracy's of Tong, good morning. There should be boundaries. There's no way that the pastor and his wife should always be sitting around laughing, talking, and playing and um, dealing with the church goers. I'm not saying not the fellowship because when you become close to some people, they come, they become carnal minded. So then they start disrespecting the leaders. They start saying whatever they want to say to the leaders because they've got comfortable with the position of being a friendship, being in a friendship. And yes, you should fellowship and you should be in friendship. I'll give you an example because I'm a firm believer um, um, of as it is in the natural, so as it is in the spiritual. I'm a, I'm a believer of that. So I'm going to give you guys another example. For example, um, in the natural world, you know, and I've been in retail all my life. So I'm going to use retail as a example. You have, a, you have, the, you have g- general managers, you have store managers, you have co-managers, you have assistant managers, you have customer service managers. So you have all these positions of authority. You have hourly, you have salary. The salary members cannot get too close to the hourly. They can't build relationships. They shouldn't be telling their private businesses to each other because it's in violation of company policy. And again, that's in the natural world. So I'm not saying that we're not supposed to fellowship. What I'm saying is build a relationship 
with boundaries. If if a pastor has an affair with somebody else, he should not go or she should not go to one of the members and say, I had an affair on my wife, especially if somebody, or I had an affair on my husband, especially if they are new in Christ, because you don't, they can't handle that. Good morning, Jess Shafante. They can't handle it. It's too much. It's too much. So you have to understand, not that God sees us greater, but there are levels of relationship. And we have to remember that we can't we can't look at our leaders any less. Because guess what? When we have a tendency to look at our leaders, oh, they just the pastor, oh, they just so and so. It opens a door to allow the enemy to put things in your mind and you stop doing what you're supposed to do according to them. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I hope y'all understand. Give me a thumbs up if you understand what I'm saying. There should be boundaries. There should be boundaries. It says, um, this is this is where it says codependent relationships, the leader and the churchgoer. As a pastor or a leader, you shouldn't be dependent on your members for anything. You should be in a fellowship with leaders that are over you or someone in your caliber, your sister pastor, a sister teacher, or leader is what I'm saying. I'm not saying not fellowship with your members because you're supposed to. But they have to also, you have to also remember that there is a thin line between leadership and abuse or leadership and control, leadership and manipulation. It says financial abuse is when a community demand, demands financial benefits at the expense of an individual's own livelihood. Financial abuse goes beyond the call to tithe. Giving is often um, exorbitant and tied to receiving special blessings. When these blessings do not materialize, however, that is rationalized by declaring the individual did not give enough. This right here is a touchy subject. And a lot of people leave churches because of money. Because of financial abuse, not only on the churchgoer side, but on the leadership side. You're having fundraisers for a thousands of years, a building fund, and the building, nothing's changed. You raising two, three, four, or five, six thousand dollars for a building fund, and then the building looks the same way it did from 20 years ago but you have a brand new car. You see what I'm saying? Abuse. If you're pressured to give, I remember one time, y'all, I can say about finances that I remember one time I went to a payday loan, y'all, because I felt like if I didn't give, that I wouldn't be blessed. I felt like if I didn't give, I wouldn't be blessed. And there was a there was a um a request that was put out that I think it was a new year or something that you give a hundred and some dollars whatever the end of the year was I did not have it I really didn't but I felt like I would have been left out or God wouldn't have blessed me if the prophet says give a hundred and some dollars and I he got to be talking to me. They got to be talking to me. Even though I didn't have it. Even though I didn't have it. And I went to a payday loan, y'all. I went to a payday loan to get this money. And y'all know. Y'all stay away from them payday loans. Don't go to the payday loan. Don't go to these payday loans. Because they're extortions. If you understand percentage, if you understand money and how it works, it's a temporary fixed fix if you if you know how to manipulate your math and run your numbers. If you don't know how to work math and understand percentages and all that, stay away from them places. But I went to a payday loan, guys, and took out a loan so I can give an offering. God didn't tell me to do that. I did it because I didn't want to feel left out and I didn't think that God was going to love me. God, did you think that I was going to be the only one? Than not being a hundred dollar line. 
What's laying there? There's nothing wrong with giving. As a matter of fact, without money, the church cannot operate. Okay, pumpkins. Yes, it is a nonprofit organization. And today is National Nonprofit Organization Day, which means nonprofit. That's just what it is. It's an organization that, that do what they do not to be receive funds. Nonprofit. They're not making a profit. Um, Vern says, exactly 10 years later, you still requesting funds for the building, but you have not purchased a doorknob. Come on here. Um, traces of Tawana's life. That's a self issue. It is. That's right. Here is why so many don't trust the church. Know the word for yourself. Absolutely. Know the word for yourself. Know the word for yourself. That is facts. And that's why the Bible says study to show that self approved. But in all reality, y'all, it takes money to run a business. Yes. 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 And my Susie Carter voice, yes, yes. It takes money to run a business. It takes money to run a church. And people will give you the shirt off their backs if you're doing what's right. The Bible said he loves a cheerful giver. Tithes and offering is not a bad thing and it should not be abused. Don't take your bill money. Thank you, Vern. Don't take your bill money and give it to the church unless God says, if God specifically talks to you and tell you to give your bill money, then you do that because guess what? He's going to make sure that you lose nothing, but you got to understand that it takes money to run a ministry. The Bible says that money answereth all things. If you want to go to a church and you want the lights to be on, if you want to go to a facility and you want air condition and you want bottled water and you want to wash your hands, how do you think that these churches are paying for these the thermometers, the electric bill? These are how the church function and we need it. We need it. We need it. The same way the house functions at home is the same thing it takes to run the body of Christ. But when people abuse it, that's when people draw back. That's when people draw back. Financial abuse. Some people want to be seen and big shots. Don't pay tithes, but want you to be in the $100 line every time a prophet come or a guest speaker. Traces of Tawana, if I could come through this this computer, shout out to Vern. Thank you, Vern, for the super chat. Thank you for the super sticker. I'm not on here abusing anyone. I'm just informing, I'm, in, I'm informing others because this is what, these are some of the ailments in the body of Christ that needs to be fixed before people get here. We need to understand um, the proper, um, appropriation appropriation of tithes and offering and giving and what it means to be a giver and what it means to sow a seed. So when you understand those things, you won't fall into that abusive realm because I was, y'all, I'm telling y'all what, what traces of Tawana's life just said, I, I have been there, done that. And you know, I didn't even know that that's what they was doing. I need 10 people to give a hundred dollars. Stand over here. You know, I need 10 people to give $100. Do it quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't do this, y'all. I keep looking up because that's just what I do. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is wrong, but it can be wrong. I'm not saying that God does not lead people to give. I'm not saying that there you can't put a demand on the body of Christ to come up. I'm not saying that. You cannot, but I'm saying when it comes to borderline financial abuse in the body of Christ. And if you don't appreciate people, even though our giving shouldn't be conditional, but we're human and that's what we do. That's what we do. 
I need this person to give 100, 20 people to give $100. And then they keep asking to ask for the $100. Then I need five people to give $50. Then I need 25 people. Excuse me, y'all. Then I need 25 people to give $20. You with the 100 there, you with the 50 there, you with the 10 there, you with the 20 there. And then all of us that only have $2, all of us that have $3, all of us that have $5, all of us that have a dollar, all of us that shake up the bottom of our pocketbook because we have the heart to give and want to give what we want to give, we're last. And feeling inferior. To those that have 50, 25, 20, 50, 100 dollars to give. All along, they're counting. It's 20 in the hundred dollar line. What's 20 times 100? You got five in the 50 dollar line. They're counting up. And as they're counting and their goal is not met, then they say, Well, I need five more people to give a hundred dollars. And then we we open up our pocketbook and post dating checks. Don't you post date near another check after this live stream. Do not post date near another check. Yeah, I said near. That's country. I've done it. I've post dated checks to my payday. That's abuse. Don't y'all do it. Don't you do it another day. And when you give, give wholeheartedly. Give because God said you give. Yes, give your offering. And, and truthfully, your offering should be bigger than your tithe. But you consult God and ask God how much you should give as far as your offering. And your tithe, you know, is 10% of what you make. Financial abuse. The Bible says money answered all things. Another example is, is um when Jesus and his disciples were on their way to a party or a function or something, and I'm paraphrasing. And um, they had to pay their way in. And Jesus sent his disciple down to the brook to get money out of the fish's mouth. That's what he did. So if Jesus had to pay his way, why do we think that we should get away with um, not having to support the body of Christ? The same way we take care of our homes are the same way. And I promise you that God will open up doors and avenues like never before. But don't allow people to abuse you or your seed. I feel that I am not being a willing. I feel that I am not being a willingly and chill forgiver if I have to be prompt to give it. When it's God's, when it's God's, he would touch your heart to give it anytime and anywhere outside of the church. Yes, you can give outside. It's not all about that. Yes, Traces of Tawana, you're on it. El Marie said, this is where people get hurt. Those demanding money make those who don't have what is required feel less than, like they're a dollar or $5 won't be received. El Marie Wright, let me tell you, you know, the woman in the Bible. There, there's examples in scripture where um, the woman had two shekels, and I almost want to say it was two pennies in Bible time. Y'all pray for my eye. This eye has been giving me some problems. I'm going to go get me an eye exam and get my new glasses because this eye is tripping on me. And your girl can't be walking around cockotted. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> yes, the, the story in the Bible, you know, it's, it's noted that they gave big money. They want to be seen and all that. They want to be seen for what they gave. And this one lady gave two seculars, which was all that she had. She, The Bible says she's, she gave more than the richest person in the room. And I'm paraphrasing, okay? I'm just paraphrasing. So financial abuse, be aware. Do not let anyone take advantage of you and your finances. Understand what the word says about being a giver because we are supposed to give. The Bible says, bring all, bring the, uh, what it says, bring your gifts, talents, and abilities or something like that. So there'll be meat into the storehouse. I'm paraphrasing y'all, but it's in there. 
So you're supposed to bring what you have into the church in order for it to flourish. You know, back in the Bible days, you know, if you was a farmer or if you were um, whatever your trade or your gift or talent ability was, you would give a tenth of that. If you had corn, you would get a tenth of corn. If you had cows, you would get a tenth of your cattle. Whatever you profit. If you had pigs, you would give a tenth of that. But nowadays, um, you give a tenth of what you earn. Whatever your business is, whatever it is that you have. You know, there's times that I've sold like one t-shirt for $25 and I tied the $2.50. And I felt great about doing it. I didn't feel like... I was being abused because I understand now. I didn't feel like I was less because I understand the principle of giving. And that's what we have to understand. And once we understand the principle of giving, we won't be so, um, um, you know, uh, easy to be financially abused. Thank you guys for chiming in. This, this is a good conversation. Um, number two, it says questions are met with hostility. What does that mean? When I come to you and I ask you a question and you straight <laughs> done went off the cuff, forgot you wore a collar and just went right off up on me. Questions are met with hostility. It says abusive communities do not like questions or criticisms. Importantly, importantly it matters not what question is asked. The question may be as simple as the type of music to be played in worship or how the annual friendship bazaar is to be structured. Questions that pertain to why something occurs as often met with vague appeals to how it always is or everyone just know how to do things, suggesting a different course of action, or worse yet, declaring that one disagrees with the action taken is met with a hostility and judgment. Slow your roll. I only asked the question, wait a minute, this is God's church. Whoa. And in, a, in, a, in abusive communities, questions and criticisms are seen as a direct, a, a direct attack against the church leader. Like, who am I? Why are they questioning me? Don't be questioning me. It's almost like a parent child. It's almost like a parent child. You know how when your child questions you and you look at them like they got five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10, 11 horns growing up out there. Hold up. I'm the mama. Don't question me. You do like I say. Now, there's a difference in questioning your leaderships and then accusing your leadership and the tone that you come to your leadership. There's a difference. But in a sense, when simple little questions are being asked because you're concerned about what's happening and your leader just smooth, forget. I mean, he go all the way back to the hood. Don't clock this Glock in his pocket or her pocket. And then smooth went off because you you said the Lord said, you know, God lit it on my heart. I'm paraphrasing, y'all. I'm paraphrasing. And trust and believe this live stream is not a punt against any ministry or any church that I have been in or any pastors or any leaders. I'm simply ex ex sharing my experiences and this teaching on five signs you're in an abusive church because it is happening. And God is exposing people and churches. So if you get exposed, humble yourself, go to God, repent, ask for forgiveness and go and make an apology in the public because what you did was public. So you need to apologize in public, even if you did it in private. And y'all, I'm not perfect. I've done some things. I, I always say that. So don't look at me sideways. So if you hear anything about Angie in real life, trust and know what's under the blood. That God already forgave me for it. And all those that were involved and hurt have been addressed and talked to. Because that's just what we're supposed to do. 
keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Because even though pastors, teachers, apostles, leaders, and all of them, they're human too. And sometimes the enemy is out to destroy their lives the same way that he's out to destroy our lives. So we have to be very, very vigilant. It says in abusive communities, questions and criticisms are seen as a direct attack against a church leader. Ship. They are out of line and deserve to be punished. Individuals who question church practices are ridiculed or negatively branded. He or she is declared problematic, disruptive, or worse yet, not a real Christian. That person may even be ejected from the community under rhetorical or expelled the wicked person. First Corinthians 5 and 13 says, God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. That's scripture. But people abuse God's word too. People abuse God's word too. Just because scripture is in the Bible, get the full content of it so that you don't abuse people and people don't feel abused. Understand why God wrote what he wrote. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 13, why did he write that scripture? He wrote it because the people in the Corinthians was living wicked and they was doing any old kind of thing. They were acting like they didn't even know who Jesus was. That is why he says, expel the wicked person. It's not because they were asking a, asking a question or being concerned about your community, your church, and approaching your leadership is not, does not mean you should be expelled. Like you don't have a right to ask questions. Stop taking God's word and using it in your favor. Oh, expel the wicked ones, the wicked person. Okay, yeah, you do expel them. But understand the context of the scripture and why he said expel the wicked person. It's not used to beat up people over the head. We talked about Second Timothy, about the word of God was given for um, training. I think it's Second Timothy, where it talks about the word of God was given for correction, you know, education. I'm paraphrasing. In the end, the community rallies to protect themselves rather than engage in a frank and honest question. So everybody jumping on you, everybody looking down at you like you did something wrong. And all you did is ask, um, you know, can we change this song today? I believe the Lord is leading me to worship in this direction. Or if you're you're going to preach a sermon that God has given you and the topic that you have been given and God really changed that topic and you go say, hey, I know you gave me this, but God is leading me in this, this direction. And they go way off the cuff on you. That's two. Where we at? Give me a time check. Give me a time check. 53, 53 minutes. I'm going to wind this up. If anybody have any questions, please feel free to email me. Okay. We will pick this up on Thursday at 8 a.m. We have a few more um, that I want to cover with you guys and that'll be it. Um, I really don't want to get into three, four, and five because this one is going to be good. It might take me over, over further than where I want to go. So come back Thursday, eight o'clock and we'll go over us versus the us versus them mentality, the cult of the leader and a myopic spirituality, spirituality. Those will be the three that we will go over and discuss on Thursday at eight o'clock. Thursday at eight o'clock. Thank you, thank you, first lady. <laughs> it says this is where people get okay. Just want to make sure. So we'll come back on Thursday. I'm going to pray out and get the rest of my day started. Um, uh, El Marie, I am out of pink glitter for your shirt, for, um, your shirt. So if I can find another piece of pink, um, I can do it for you in pink and let me know what size 
I only had one sheet of the pink and I made that. I was a custom made order um, just for her. So right now she's the only one that have a pink one. Um, I love you guys. And I thank you guys for being here. I barely sipped on my coffee. If you guys have an exercise today, get them bodies right. Go walk, do some sit-ups, do some something. Thank you guys for being here. Um, if you guys are interested in sowing a seed into um, Everyday Living or Angie and Real Life Ministries, the cash app is Angie and Real Life. Um, if you're interested in being a guest on my show, then you guys um, email me, Angie at Real Life. If, you, if you're considering co-hosting with me, I'll take a co-host, um, a, co a guest co-host with me Tuesday, Thursdays, 8 a.m., I will send you the information from topic. We will meet and we can discuss it. So look, um, I love you guys so much and I appreciate all of you again. Um, go back. I think I dropped a video on yesterday. I am sharing you. I am sharing my experience with you guys. Um, there has been some shifting in Angie in real life. So I will be doing it's a lifestyle channel. So you will be seeing vlogs. Right now, I'm vlogging my experience with degenerative disc disease. So, and my experience with aqua therapy. Um, I'm also video and filming my lock journey. Um, and I'm also experiencing with cooking. So, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, it is a lifestyle channel. We'll be having talks, vlogs, and food and beauty. That's what this channel consists of and review. So it's kind of like a smorgasbord, but it's a lifestyle. So when you live in a life, you do things that pertain to life. <laughs> so I'm your lifestyleist, hope dealer, purpose pusher. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's live stream. God, we give you glory and honor and we thank you for what you have done on this live stream. God, I pray that clarity has been made. This has been a great topic and a great subject. I thank El Marie Wright, Traces of Tawana, Verge Junk Closet, McVee, um, all of those that came on to enjoy this wonderful topic as we grow together in God's word because there is going to be an overflow. And in that overflow, we have to understand exactly what abuse is so we won't abuse others and we have to understand where abuse is so that others will not abuse us because that's not what the church is about that's not what the body of christ is about and now people do twist things around and get people you know some rebellious folk you just need to put them in their place and call it a day in the spirit of meekness <laughs> Nicely ask them to grab their books, bags, and belongings and exit to the left, to the door at the left. <laughs> but I think that's it, guys. Tuesday, Thursday, live, 8 a.m. is Everyday Living. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, normally I will try to upload a video around 2 p.m. My upload to be around 2 p.m. So Keep an eye out. Make sure that your notification bell is on and you will be notified whenever I post a video or go live. If you do not have a channel membership, please consider get a channel membership. And forgive me, members. I love you guys. I need to make a video for you guys. And I'm working on that. I love you guys. Um, I thank you so, 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 so much. And don't you forget that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. One plan of one water, but it's the almighty God that gives the increase. It is in him that we live, we move and have our being and we can do no thing without him. And remember that we only die once, but we live every day. In the words of my late great mother, remember to live, baby, live. See you guys Thursday. Angie in real life. life, life. Angie in real life with one L. Life, life. I am your hope dealer and your purpose push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out. Here's what you gotta do. Hit the book and start your economy too. Here's what you gotta do.
up, what's up, what's up, my life for how will we welcome back to another day's journey in the world with your girl, me, Angie, and Real Life. Look, guys, welcome to Angie and Real Life. You guys will come here and you will get encouraged, you will get influenced, and you will get motivated. I am known as your hope dealer and your purpose pusher, pusher. So guess what? All things on Angie and Real Life are created with you in mind. So if you subscribe to this channel, you will not regret it. So here's what you got. Gotta do hit the bell, subscribe, share, and comment too. It's Angie in real life. It's Angie in real life. It's Angie in real life. It's one L in real life. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all my subscribers. I love you so, 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 so much. AKA, you guys are known as life. So join the movement and see you in the next video. Deuces.